Did you know that certain plants cause sun sensitivities? They can give you sunburns and increase your risk of skin cancer. Here are five plants that are known to cause sun-related skin conditions called photodermatitis and what you can do about it and which foods to target if this happens. Number one, limes. Don't go into the sun after squeezing limes without washing your hands because it has a natural germ-finding chemical called furocumarins that gets activated by the UVA rays from the sun to damage your skin's DNA. Reactions can range from painful redness to blistering burns that occur within hours or days after sunlight exposure to the area of the skin that came in direct contact with the lime peels or juice. Number two, lemons. Don't make lemonade outdoors in the sunlight. My friend's daughter did that and then she jumped into the pool to swim. An hour later, her hands began to blister, these giant blisters, because the furrow cumarins and the lemon peel and juice cause an extreme sunburn. Number three, be careful when you're clearing weed like wild parsnips. When you touch the plants, make sure you wash it off with soap and water. The sap contains furrocumerins that causes severe sunburns and really no one is immune. If you are gardening, make sure that you wear gloves, that you're covering yourself with long sleeves and long pants. And number four, after you collect those weeds, some people choose to burn those weeds instead of composting them. Well, burning is not good for you, for me, or for our environment. And if you burn the wrong wild plants, like wild parsnips, the furrocumerins will travel in the air, land on any part of your exposed skin. And if you don't wash it off, you can get a bad sunburn. And number five, you don't have to have direct skin contact with plants to get sun sensitivity. You can actually eat them and their natural chemicals can get deposited in your skin which can make you sensitive. And that's really how food works, right? When you eat some food, it gets your nutrients get deposited in your skin to help it heal. Well, if you're taking herbs like St. John's warts, you should know that it will make you sun sensitive and you can develop skin peeling or sores between two to 21 days after taking St. John's warts because of a plant chemical called hypericin. Now, if you're seeing some of these mild reactions, the first thing to do is to stop contacting or taking whatever you're you're eating just stop the culprit um, go wash your hands try to wash off gently with um, a gentle non-perfumed soap uh, and get out of the sun now if your reaction is getting worse go see a medical doctor that same day bring all your medications and herbs think about your exposure to cosmetics detergents perfumes plants foods herbs and medications and make that list, give it to your doctor when you show up. The sooner you see a doctor, the better that they can help you figure out what's going on so that you have less complications, including scarring. And the first thing your doctor will do is decide on whether or not that reaction is so severe to that he or she may wanna give you an immunosuppressive agent like a steroid. Now steroids may oversuppress your body, leading to infectious complications. And this is why I always carefully consider uh, giving steroids, even topically. A culture of the area may be taken if it looks infected. And the goal is to prevent progression, um, is to keep the area clean and free of germs. And for severe reactions, it's treated like a chemical burn. Really, that's what it is. We may use um, burn creams and ointments such as silver sulfadiazine, antibiotic ointments, or medical grade Manuka honey. Um, all these are great um, unless you're allergic. So this is why you should contact professional help before you start putting on these solutions. But if you are immunocompromised, if you're diabetic, or you have any organ failure, um, you really should see a medical doctor. Now food is an integral part of wound healing. Like I mentioned, if toxins can be presented to your skin, so can nutrients, and these nutrients can heal what the toxins were inducing. Now the first thing you should understand is that when you are healing, prolonged fasting just isn't gonna help you, and neither is eating food that's full of junk, right? So like soda, candy, or chips. And these chemicals that distract your immune system uh, which is an integral part of healing your skin is not beneficial for your recovery. 
Think about your immune system like a contractor that you've just hired to fix your bathroom. Now, if you give the contractor other jobs like painting your kitchen or gardening, you're really just going to delay finishing your bathroom. So any other stress that you give your body will delay healing. And stress can be in the form of eating junk food or can be picking up a cold or getting like foodborne illness or exercising excessively or having mental stress or simply not sleeping well. And let's face it, your life is full of distractions and it takes effort to keep focus. And certain foods are definitely more beneficial than others when it comes to wound healing. Concentrate on incorporating beans like tofu, garbanzo beans and lentils because they are rich in protein, anti-inflammatory nutrients, and they help actually lower your blood sugar. Important for healing. Pineapple is also really good to eat because it contains an enzyme called bromelain shown to reduce scarring. And that scarring is really excessive collagen deposited unnecessarily. But your skin needs collagen, which makes your body be able to function. And you can make your own collagen if you have enough zinc and vitamin C. So pumpkin seeds and lentils are rich in zinc, but honestly, it's hard for people to get enough zinc on a daily basis. One to two billion people around the world are deficient in zinc. So when it comes to skin injuries, you will have delayed wound healing if you don't have enough zinc. I prescribe supplements to achieve physiologically necessary levels. Because if you can't get enough zinc on a normal day when you're not sick, you're definitely not gonna get enough zinc on days when you are sick. Nutrient inadequacies are just super common. Another nutrient to take into consideration is vitamin C. Um, it's easy to get in fresh foods and vegetables. And the key is eating enough of them. We know that 42% of Americans just don't eat enough vitamin C in their normal diets. And this is why the term supplements is misunderstood and really underappreciated. A micronutrient is only supplemental if you have enough to meet your physiological daily needs. These needs change every day depending on what you're doing, how much stress you have. It is essential if you don't have enough. Join me in my next video to make small aims for big gains in your health.